where do you see that this leaves the BBC at the moment? Because there are calls from the Justice Secretary today for a review of the corporation's handling of the claims. He says that review might very well need to be carried out. Well, the BBC is in a very difficult position. They're kind of damned if they do and damned if they don't. Um, your excellent reporter is absolutely right that they uh, that there are two issues. There's, there's a case called Sikri, which was the Manchester bombing uh, uh, victim, uh, sorry, alleged perpetrator. And uh, that was a decision that, that someone who's the subject of serious allegations is entitled to privacy in them until there's a proper police charge or, uh, and, or, and or arrest and the defamation risk as well. Now, that those two risks not only confront Fleet Street, but they also confront the BBC. So from a PR perspective, obviously what they want to do is say, right, we're cooperating with the police, we've suspended uh, X, uh, and therefore, in a, in a very public way, they are doing what the people want them to do, which is, so to speak, to come clean. But they can't. They, they absolutely cannot do that. And so at the moment, they're, they're I think, slightly un, unjustly being criticised for not having done more when it's difficult to see what else they could do than that to suspend the individual and contact the police. I think that's as far as they can go at the moment. What, what do you make, though, about the situation with the police? Um, what we were told today, that they would meet the police uh, to discuss the matter further. The Met Police yesterday said there'd be no formal referral or allegation made. But clearly, if there is a suspicion of a criminal act having been taken out, shouldn't the police be you know, out of the blocks and investigating pretty quickly? Well, absolutely. I mean, it, it's difficult to imagine a more serious or, or vile apparent offence. Yeah. Uh, and nor, nor can you imagine it being any higher profile than already is. So, and of course, the poor BBC, they've got Jimmy Savile, they've got um, Rolf Harris. You know, they, they've got these nightmares in, in, in the past which, which still haunt them. But the, uh, they, I'm sure, are as keen as anyone else to get the police properly on board, not least because if the police arrest this individual and charge him, then at that point... The law makes it clear that the BBC and everyone else in Fleet Street, who I'm sure know, I'm sure Fleet Street knows who this individual is, then at that point it can be reported. And all these unfortunate BBC presenters who are the subject of vile online abuse uh, will finally be able to uh, make it clear that they're they're not the they're not the perpetrator. And Jonathan, just just explain to me um, and to our viewers, as a media lawyer, this this whole area about privacy and of naming the individual. We know over the weekend there was Nikki Campbell, there was Jeremy Vine, there was Ryland all coming out and saying, it's not me. Because so many other people have been um, wrongly associated with this, is that any sort of justification for the individual it does concern to be named? It, it, there's a very strong argument along those lines. And that indeed is one of the arguments that the press has made in the past. You know, while there's speculation about who this person is and while we don't know who it is, then lots of innocent people are going to be subject to these allegations. It is a very strong argument. The argument against it is that it's possible that these allegations are completely false. Just as, for example, you know, Christopher Jeffries, um, who was the Clifton College schoolmaster who was effectively accused by well. Fleet Street of, of, of murdering it. Well, I remember particularly well because Christopher Jeffries taught me English. I was at Clifton College. Right. You know, his life was ruined by him wrongly being named, inverted commas, by Fleet Street as having murdered someone in the block of flats where, where, where he lives. So there is that other danger as well. This is such a difficult area of law that it's very difficult to strike the balance. My own view is that a sensible watershed is when the police have looked at the evidence, they've decided there's enough evidence to charge and they go that formal step at that point, then it's appropriate for the public to know. But as I say, there are plenty of respectable views that are different. Jonathan, thank you very much indeed for that.